Hello everyone, welcome to Inner Voice Show, the show that's about everything that matters to you. Today, we're going to speak to an attorney and a psychotherapist about the voice and mediation. I'm Dr. Fujian Zain, and joining me are Dina Linchitsky, who is an attorney and a psychotherapist, and Nasreen Bakhordari, who's a licensed marriage and family therapist. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. As always, it's an honor to be here, and uh, it's really lovely to have Dina with us today. It is a joy to have Dina with us. Um, the reason we asked Dina to join us is um, she is part of our team in Personal Growth Institute, where the psychological services we um, offer a gamut, a different gamut of uh, range of psychological um, services, such as psychotherapy, neurofeedback. Um, we have a, joined by a psychiatrist recently. We do art therapy, and um, we also have added the mediation to the whole um, services. So we asked Dina to join us and with Master Mbakwardari to talk about different aspects of um, how divorce really affects us. And uh, some parts of it obviously is psychological and some parts of it are legal because we could just be separated, but it seems like the legal matters really matter in the way that we do things and the way that it really puts pressure on us and the whole family system. So um, we wanted to tell you a little bit about the distinctions between maybe a mediation and going to an attorney and how that affects the whole system and the dynamic of the family. So Dina, tell us about um, how you actually uh, got into wanting to be uh, do mediation because I know that you've been an attorney for many years and now you're in the transition and um, shifting to be a therapist and you're bringing somehow the two together in a um, form of a mediation where there's no hopefully there's no fight and somehow there's an appropriate negotiation in what you want and intend to do with the clients. Well, um, I wanted to combine my legal knowledge with my psychological um, knowledge and use it to help people mm -hmm. and maybe lessen the effects uh, the divorce can have, the detrimental effects that it can have on children and uh, the parties involved. I attended um, a Woody Mostyn seminar and I was trained as a mediator um, and um, that was very helpful in learning how to combine the two and how to help people go through this process mm -hmm. in a way that is the least detrimental to the children, to the parties involved, you know, it, and it covers everything. Mediation is all encompassing, you know, you can um, go, go, we can help you with the legal issues or you can, if you choose to do so, retain your own attorney or you can have a consulting attorney present through mediation. There are many options. And there are also different um, people who are involved in the process. There is uh, an attorney mediator which, who is a neutral party, which is who I am. There are also therapists that can help the parties going through mediation with um, their own processes and their children, like how to help children go through divorce and deal with it. We can guide you step by step into helping alleviate any concerns that the children have or help and helping the parents work together to create an environment where the children can thrive and they can minimize the effects of divorce. Exactly. I know that uh, many um, attorneys have actually called upon me to go and sit in the room when they were working with their clients because usually through a divorce setting they go through a lot of emotional turmoil and um, they're going between whether they want to do this or not or one person is really ready to get a divorce usually the other person isn't and there's so much going on um, which sometimes they take upon one person is trying to protect themselves and they're angry the person who doesn't want to get a divorce are probably more angry and needing to protect in some level and that's where a lot of emotional turmoil happens. Um, Nasrin, what do you think and your experience has been when working with uh, the group who needed to uh, get a divorce and have you seen a distinct difference between the families who have gone through mediation rather than having to go through the divorce process with you know attorneys or just by themselves? You know, going to court, first of all, is uh, very time-consuming, it's very costly, but overall it's also 
takes the control out of the couple's hand. And even though in California it's no blame in the courts, it's still uh, up to judge to make decisions. And there is really no control, whereas when the parents come to the mediation, nobody blames them, nobody takes sides with them. They look at the strengths of, the, of two parents and they use it for the benefit of the children or for the benefit of their future arrangement, whatever it could be. So it's much more contributing to their cooperation with each other and it takes uh, much, much less time going to court and the lawyers and we know how much it falls behind from um, one session to the other, from one week to another, and sometimes it takes weeks and months and even years going through the loops of the court. Whereas in mediation, you can create these arrangements within a few weeks and be done. It's much less distressing for the children as well yes. to go through court or to go through mediation and they're really very little, they're not a part of it, and when they are, it's a much more friendly environment. A lot of times there is a playroom for younger children where they are being interviewed or talked to or played with through resolving what they want or what they need. So there is a really, there is a huge, huge difference. Right. La yesterday I was at a seminar, I was at a Landmark Wisdom Seminar, and it was amazing. Um, they asked people to bring um, some of their family members there. and. Who was there were, were a couple who uh, had gone divorced a couple of years ago, and they were appreciating each other. And one of the most beautiful concepts that they were talking about was that the husband said to the wife, I really thank you for who you are for my children. And I know that we're best friends. We've become more of a best friend since we've gotten divorced than when we were friends. And the lady turned around to him and said, thank you for your generosity and who you have been even after a divorce. And thank you that for the first time in my life and all of my friends and family's life, we've actually looked upon divorce in a way that um, was a growth for both of us. And you've made this experience, which is usually traumatic for everyone, an experience that has made both of us grow and has made our whole family system actually more healthy because somehow when we were together, we were in a match and we were not healthy. So I think it'd be amazing to be able to get, create that. So obviously we want everybody who decided to be married and have kids to be together and have a healthy marriage. But in case they've done everything that they could do and they no longer can be together and it's no longer healthy to be together, to, uh, healthy about each other or even the kids, then it seems like what is the next level and it seems like when you do negotiation in a peaceful manner and you both feel that you're part of this negotiation and that there's someone who's really being kind of like taking care of both of you and somewhere in the middle and has the best of interest of the whole family system and their future um, in their mind while they're negotiating for you is probably the best level that you could ever imagine for a healthy system beyond the marriage. All right. Um, the mediator is there as a neutral party, not exactly a blank slate, but as a neutral party to help guide the parties to reach a solution that they're both comfortable with that they both can live with. And also, I think that's available in mediation um, that I know a lot of people have benefited from is trial runs. You can um, agree on something like a parenting plan and give it a try and see if it works and then go back into the process and see if it works or not. You know, it's an opportunity to be heard. Uh, a mediator meets with each party separately and then a mediator would meet with both of them together. Uh, we can also bring in a financial planner who will help you look through your financials and a therapist who is going to be present to help with um, any issues that may come up because even in something that may be a seem to people like a purely financial issue like for example spousal support brings up a lot of emotional concerns like for example a person's self-worth and a person's value you know how they value their worth in a marriage and that can create a lot of stress and imbalance and it's um, helpful to have a team there who can guide you through the process and make sure that the stress is not compounded any further that needs to be. Definitely a team of um, attorneys and psychotherapists and child specialists really help through the process. I know especially with 
couples who do have kids. One of their biggest concerns, and sometimes the reason they're not getting a divorce and they kind of prolong their unhealthy marriage is really because of the love that they have for their kids and they don't know how this is going to affect them. So one of the things we do as psychotherapists is really work with the couple in how to talk to the children different ages, take in a different way of handling uh, the divorce concept. There are different fears that comes up at different age of children. So it's important first for the couple to be clear in what is it that they're getting divorced about, to get clear about who they are and how they want to be after a divorce. How are they going to talk to their kids? Is it going to be individual or is it going to be the group of kids together? And it really depends if the kids are in the closer proximity of age or they're far apart. And um, then how to set it up as the custody issue. So from b kind of before knowing that the, the kids know that they're not going to lose either or of their parents, but they're going to be with them. And the custody level of agreements will bring some sort of um, uh, safety and security and assurance for the kids in how the system will be that yes, we're shifting and we're making a change from the way we are today, but this is the way it's going to be in the future and how they're going to be with it. This is a very important issue. People really are not aware uh, what happens with their children. They are thinking of themselves or I want to be a father to my infant or to my four years old to, or to my 12 years old. And they are thinking of what they are needing in order to be involved with the children. And they also present it at the court as such. And the court and the judge is not uh, really informed of the different needs of children at different stages. And a need of an infant to two and a half years old is very different than a need of a two and a half to six year old, from six to nine year old, from nine to 12, from 12 to 18. Every one of these stages has its own challenges for these children. An infant feels abandoned by a parent. A three year old, uh, uh, um, about three to six year old feels that they are the cause of this divorce. Whereas a six to nine year old blames one against the other one. And then uh, a teenager at 12 to 18 years old, all they are thinking of is just uh, getting out of their family and becoming emancipated much earlier than the children who are from intact families. This is what's going, not that they actually they do it, but this is what's going on in their mind. And therefore, it's really important to have a mediator who's very knowledgeable about what the children are going through and be able to advise the parents what is the need of these children at each stage and what is to their benefit. Is it to the benefit of them to sleep in two houses and ch change from one night to the other? Or is it to their benefit to stay with one parent and visit with the other one during the day? Each child at each different age has different needs. Yes, and um, you deal with also the, uh, part of the uh, agreement of finances and um, child support and uh, child custody, right? Right. Okay. So tell our audience exactly when somebody is supposed to come in, like somebody calls you. What is the procedure? What happens after that? Well, once you call, um, I have, we have to make sure that um, both parties agree. You know, you can't just call and say, I want to come in and uh, we don't want to make the other party feel like they're being dragged into it. The whole purpose of this is to make both parties feel like they're a part of this and they want to accomplish an agreement that they've both invested in and they've both feel heard and understood. So we bring both parties in at the same time and we meet with both parties. Um, usually people come into mediation um, when they've tried litigation and it has not been successful or they've, um, it's been costly and they realize that they want to spend money because mediation is um, much, much less costly than litigation. And um, so we want to bring people in and we want to hear their concerns. Then we meet with, both part with each party separately and um, then we have a few joint sessions and that depends on how many issues people have. Sometimes, you know, people may choose to continue to litigate certain issues in court and they may choose to do child custody in mediation. So we do that. 
and that's what they agree upon in mediation because they don't want to expose their children um, to the litigation process or they may want to do a, a spousal support mediation we can help them do that so it can be piecemealed or it can be done together and the length it depends on the types of finances that people have um, how complicated that is and what their issues with their children um, are and basically how um, willing they are to work together. Mm -hmm. The more people are willing to work together, the easier it is to accomplish right. a goal. I know that we've brought also a, um, an expert in finances, an accountant, and a forensic accountant to the team because obviously the divorce is a financial um, agreement and it's a financial agreement that really has to work for everyone for a long time after. Uh, some of these people have been married for such a long time and their children are such a young age that they will have to have a, appropriate financial agreements for many years to come all the way to maybe 18 years. So um, it's very important for the couple to be able to piece that together in a way that is agreed upon because when it's a, sometimes forced upon one of the parties, we see a lot of rebelliousness and revenge um, happening after they've gone out of the court system, which then causes a lot more of financial hardship and emotional hardship throughout the years that they've got to be dealing with each other on a financial level. So we'll be right back. Stay tuned. خرد زندگی مجموعه از سیدی های صوتی به شما رو به اعماق وجود خودتون میبره تا آرامش درون، خواب آسوده، رهایی از احساساتی که شما رو آزار میده و با بدن خودتون متصل میکنه به زبان فارسی و انگلیسی این مجموعه با صدای دکتر فوجان زینی شما رو هیپنوتیز میکنه و کلمات تلغینی به کار رفته میشه تا شما رو سریعتر به اهداف خودتون برسونه با موسیقی که به شما آرامش میده و با تکنیک مانو رو بیت. برای سفارش این سیدی های صوتی با دکتر فوجان زینی در تارنمای فوجان دات کام تماس بگیرید و یا با شماره تلفن 818 648 21 چهه 818 648 21 چهه My New Life دیویدی سخنرانی در مورد رهایی از اعتیاد و رفتارهای معتادگونه بیماری اعتیاد از دیدگاه های مختلف تأثیرات مواد در بدن و روی مغز و تأثیر بیماری اعتیاد در شخصیت افراد و افراد فامیل به وسیله سخنرانان دکتر فوجان زینی دکتر ایرج شمسیان و مجید مولوی پور به زبان فارسی برای سفارش دیویدی با شماره تلفن 818 519 59 چهل 818 519 59 چهل و یا تارنمای mynewlifeprogram.com تماس بگیر Welcome back to the Inner Voice Show I'm here with um, Dina Linchitsky and Nasri Mahordari talking about mediation divorce um, how to be civilized, how to be healthy, how to be even loving through the time that we're deciding to say goodbye to a form of a relationship that we've had. Most of the people who are together, um, if they don't have children and they decide they don't want to be together anymore, they can. And after a while, there'll be a memory in pictures in each other's life. But people who do have children, no matter what, even if they get a divorce, they will be part of each other's life, no matter what. So deciding in how to be after a marriage and how to go through this transition is an important factor in everyone's mental health and specifically in the children's mental health. So Dina, tell us a little bit more about how does this process move people along um, in a more healthier and in a more, I can't say happier because that's not true, but in a more less destructive and traumatizing. Right. 
Well, in any litigation, in any time you go to court, there's always a winner and a loser. Yes. So, um, and even if it's not framed that way, it's just um, the way the process works, and this is the mindset that the people go into the litigation with. Is this is, I want to win, and I don't want to lose. This is a, an entirely different atmosphere from the beginning. This is a place for both parties to agree to make um, a decision to work this out in a way that is mutually beneficial to both of them, to their children, and our job as mediators and other professionals is to help, most importantly, help people understand that they're going to be in each other's lives for a very, very long time. And it's better to be in each other's lives for a very, very long time and learn to work with each other and learn to tolerate each other and learn to live separately but you know be able to communicate be able to um, understand each other be able to care about their children's interests without putting their interests and their um, fights and um, their conflict before anything else and uh, talk a little bit about how to put um, your essence of who you are as a parent <clears throat> and how you actually look at the benefit of children above um, at that moment needing to protect yourself and needing um, to make the other person wrong and making sure that I'm right and the kids know that I'm right, I'm the good person and the other person is the bad person. And we go through a lot of this turmoil. Um, it's really, it's very true and the mediator's job is to support both parties and let them know that uh, their feelings are validated, how they feel, how angry they are, and to, in an environment of a very supportive place, to be there for them, but separate their anger from their logic, and as a neutral person, the mediator will bring what is best for children and for their developmental needs and where they are, and to be able to create a place where she looks at the strengths of each parent and what is best for children. If there is a parent who is very good for them educationally, doing homework with them, has the patience to do this, and there is another parent who would play sports with them or is musical and is very helpful to be musical or is very playful with them or is good at taking care of some other needs of the children, we draw out these uh, strengths and give that role to that parent for the most part, not the whole part, but uh, in general to draw that out and see what's the, to the benefit of the children and put the two parents together side by side to be able to give their best to the children in a very supportive environment where their and their emotions are not negated. Especially when um, a couple decides to go through uh, a separation, the future is unknown, completely unknown. Um, usually they've gone through a honeymoon phase where they've loved each other, they've worked out everything and they've wanted to work out everything, then they go through some sort of a power struggle stage where they make each other wrong, they're really trying to do their best, it's just not working out, each person thinks I'm putting my 100%, the other one is not, and they try to shift things and it can't, and usually one person above and faster than the other one gives up and says, this is just isn't for me, and I can't. And I'm talking just regular divorces, I'm not talking in marriages that there are a lot of trauma and abuse and all of that. But in normal divorces, this is in families, uh, in marriages and divorces, this is the path that usually takes. And then after a while, the one person decides that I need to get a divorce, or even one person kind of um, removes themselves from the marriage. So they've gotten the psychological divorce, although they haven't gotten a physical or a financial divorce. They've actually gotten a psychological divorce. And when they've done that, then one of the parties who's kind of left um, in this empty space and feeling alone sometimes asks for the divorce. Not that they weren't hoping for this marriage to shift, but because it didn't and because their spouse kind of like moved away in their own world, they can't handle this aloneness anymore, and that's where they ask for the divorce. So divorce at that time, it's only the concept of, I don't want this anymore. 
but they have no idea what they want or what life is going to look like as a single parent, as someone who's going to share parenthood, they're going to share some of the finances in the future. So the future is going to be unknown for both the couple and the children. And nobody likes unknownness because it produces a lot of anxiety. So then anxiety comes in the room when they're trying to negotiate about the future plans. Each one of them might have an idea about what would look like, but most people, it's only an idea. Um, they don't really know how life is going to turn out. So one of the ways that it really helps is that divorce therapy and mediation therapy and mediation on a legal term, it brings up and it attempts to create a um, blueprint about the next year and the, the year after of how these processes should take place so that it involves all of the parties and makes it a little bit easier to pass through this transition time for themselves. So Dina, tell us a bit about how do you support this transition time step by step when you're looking at the, the financial piece and their emotional piece and I think it really helps because you're both an attorney and a therapist so um, in both elements when you're in the room you're taking care of them. Well, um, mediation focuses a lot on the client um, process and informed decision making. Um, we try to help the client understand what their options are, their legal options, their financial options. And we go through and we try to see the big picture. You know, some people, they may focus, for example, on the home or on their retirement accounts. And we try to go through it step by step, you know, and try to help the client see the big picture and see how they can learn to live with it and how they can maybe meet their interests and their partner's interests and their children's interests and how that can all be worked in and balanced together. How um, nobody gets everything they want, but uh, we try to help people learn to negotiate and learn to come to a mutually agreeable decision where they can be happy with and they can live with that for a very long time. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that clients feel like, um, not just feel like, but make their decisions, that both parties make decisions and that they communicate and that they both agree on it. Because if the parties that both agree on it, they're more, more likely to um, abide by the terms of the agreement. That is something that they feel that they've authored. There is a um, sort of an authorship to it and ownership of this um, agreement. And, and I know that sometimes uh, in actuality they do attempt to agree and then um, they go home and uh, another part which is resisting or um, just didn't want to or they go and talk to their family members or friends and they're like no you shouldn't do this and you should be doing this and this and you should be protecting yourself and all of that so they still have the space of mediation to come back to and renegotiate some of the aspects which they may be negotiated at the beginning but mm, they don't feel that was a fair negotiation for them or they went and talked to some of their friends and said well I didn't have enough information and um, I just wanted another way. And it seems like until the actual uh, papers are drawn and final signatures are there, there's a lot of sessions that can be there and room for renegotiations until they really, really feel that they agree and they feel comfortable with what's happening, which is, again, less costly to go to a mediator um, and a therapist, we're a team who's working together to go back and forth through these renegotiations re um, versus you, each person having to deal with all of these re-decisions and re-negotiations re um, through two attorneys who are each charging about $400, $450 an hour to do any types of renegotiation. And it's true. I mean, regardless of what we think that or we hope that negotiation happens immediately all in one session encompassing everything and we feel good about it that's very ideal thinking that really does not happen rarely that happens that in one session we're going to get there but it's definitely less costly to sit with a mediator who's also a therapist and a team of therapists who um, are experts in divorce therapy to 
be able to bring those two people in a place that they actually agree with each other. Also, uh, after the papers are drawn, it's not like a court decision. You always can come back and renegotiate. Whereas where when a judge gives a decision, it's reinforceable. And if somebody does not uh, do what they need to do, there is lawyers and courts, again, to make them comply with the decision. Whereas in mediation, even after the paper is drawn, you can go back and renegotiate, and that's not a legal, it's not legally binding. It's an agreement between the two of you, and papers are drawn for your benefit to know what you agreed on in writing, but you can always come back but, and But that's and a transition that. time, but at one point, the attorney does take all of these, and it becomes legally binding when they all actually agree, and when it goes into the court system, because the divorce still needs to happen, and divorce is a legal concept, right? Right, right. Divorce is a legal concept, and divorce is, you know, final and legally binding. Um, the mediation, once all parties agree to it, and once everybody signs off on it, it is filed with the court. Um, but um, even a court decision can be appealed and changed. The difference is that when you go back and you want to change something that the court has decided it is extremely costly you have to involve attorneys again you have to go through the legal system through all the processes um, whereas with the mediation you go back to the same mediator and we don't have to go through the whole process again we just um, focus on that one issue and um, since you know, the parties are already familiar with the process they're already familiar with our team we can um, in a short period of time help them resolve this one issue and move forward. Right, because what I remember with many of my clients where we, or that are going through a divorce, if one of them, you know, in the midst of this has another experience or talks to family members and um, uh, wants another concept, when by the time they call the attor their attorney and their attorney has to charge them, and then their attorney calls the other attorney or writes a letter to the other attorney, the other attorney charges. By the time they get it to the person, then they have their own reaction. And then the attorney and the person have their own reaction about, and it's usually in the context of fighting. So then they'll fight and then they'll come back. And you go back and forth with this four people in the middle who are really not talking to each other. Um, it takes longer and it costs a lot more rather than having the two come back have a session with the mediator um, and sit down and go back and forth and if there needs to be a therapist within that session they can you know they'll still maybe three or four people but they're all together they're sitting down they're all working for a, a unified concept of an agreement which not only takes less time which can happen in one to two hours and it will be costing much less, one-tenth of maybe of going back and forth just to keep renegotiating the items that needs to be renegotiated. Right. And, and on top of that, the um, court hearing is public information, whereas um, being with mediation and working with mediator is confidential, completely confidential, and everything stays with the mediator, and it is not open to other people's um, hearing from it, from financial agreement to any other agreement. So what part of this is confidential? It's a very good point that you made, but it's, I wonder, uh, because obviously, when it becomes a divorce, it becomes a public record, whether it was through mediation or whether it was through divorce. So is it that the process is confidential? So, for example, if, if people are actually fighting in the court, everything that is in the court and they're fighting becomes a public record, while if they go through a mediation, everything is kept private, and then only when it's... Um, uh, you know, gone to the court in order for the divorce to be complete, then all that the public knows about it is that they're divorced? That's, um, that's exactly right. Once um, the parties reach an agreement in mediation, both parties signed a, a release of confidentiality, mm -hmm. and um, whatever the court needs to be filed with the court, that is obviously public record. However, in the process, uh, when people go through divorce, there are many legal papers filed, legal documents filed, where people dis uh, there are many disclosures required of um, information, of um, 
um, things people say about each other that will later be available to their children when they grow up. You know, everything is public record, whereas here people can fight privately, and that is uh, a, a great benefit. You know, it's like fighting in your own home, but having a person there to make sure it doesn't get out of control and helps you reach a, sol um, a resolution. Mm -hmm. So what is um, a case that you, uh, not obviously t talking about who they are, but uh, the essence of um, the experience that you've had with a couple who's gone back and forth, and if they went to an attorney, um, it would have been longer and lengthier and much more costlier. And you know, a case example of how mediation has actually brought that down on, on both level and has made an easier way of handling the today and the tomorrow. Well, um, the costs of mediation, the average cost of mediation, um, is about $6,500. The average cost of litigation is um, 70 plus thousand dollars. Woohoo! <laughs> 70,000! Yes, and also... Wait, 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 <laughs> wait, wait. 6,500, let's just say 7,000 right. to 70,000? Mm -hmm. And these wow. are the figures from msnbc.com, so they, they're available online. These are, these are <laughs> wow. the, the study figures. And, um, you know, mediation also gives you the benefit of confidentiality, privacy, a, a, a chance to be heard, a chance to feel like you're part of the process, um, not to feel like you're a part of a fight where you have to be a winner or a loser. Um, I think $70,000, everybody's a loser. But, um, you know, not to feel like you're a winner or a loser, but to feel like you're part of the team and give you a chance to look mm -hmm. forward to the future where you can see yourself working together yes. with this person for the benefit of your children, maintaining right. a relationship with your children and with your former partner. And I think one thing that um, I think is great for everybody to know, which is each party can and usually does, and it's recommended mm -hmm. by us to uh, get a consultation by their own attorney. And even when the mediation is done, to take the mediation papers to their own attorney and um, have it uh, approved or get second opinions about it. It's just that the cost of an attorney that each person actually goes and gets uh, is going to probably be 400, maybe one, one or two hours of consultation for them rather than the $70,000 worth of fight. These are very, very different. But it's important to know that um, people can, may, and should have their own attorneys which also looks at this whole process so that they feel that no matter what, they have been taken care of and their legal rights have been included in all of that. So last word. We talked mostly about divorce, but really the use of uh, mediation is for all sorts of family uh, matters, like prenuptial and premarital agreement, financial or budget disagreement, separation, divorce, alimony, parenting issues, which we talked about, elder care, adult and sibling conflicts, and also parents with adult children conflicts and states. So all the matters of the family, whatever conflict arises in the family, could be resolved in mediation rather than uh, be taken into court and go that way. Great. Thank you so much, both of you, for being here. And um, thank you for being with us. Now, Toronto people, I'm going to be there April 26th, Saturday, uh, from 2 to 6. And um, I'm going to be having a workshop. It's not a lecture. It's going to be a workshop. So it's going to be hands-on talking about communication in the family. So it's going to be in Persian. So I'm going to talk to all the Iranians who speak Persian to join me. It's going to be free. What's better than that? Free. So be there Saturday, April 26th from 2 to 6. I'll be there with you telling you um, about the latest research um, in teenage brain and uh, how to communicate mostly with your teenagers because that's probably the, l the hardest one to do. So thank you for being with us. Take good care. Until the next show, goodbye. <laughs>